This, this is Equal Stars Alarms, and today we will be doing a test of not this panel today. You may click, and you may be thinking to yourself, what panel are you doing it about? And then you read the title and you went, oh, it says 320. That's right, if we come over here, we notice that there is a another panel sitting here. That's right, I've got an NFS 320 SIS. It's just an NFS 320, but it has the chassis of what you'd find on the NFS 2640. So yes, this is a 320. Unfortunately, it, it, there is labels, but you can see on there, CPU 320 SIS. And on the board, NFS 2640 is crossed out, and 320 is not crossed out. Yes, this is a 320. Now, much like that panel, it is a notifier for Onyx series panel. But instead of having the ability to run two loops, this can only run one. So it does still have one loop that is capable of running both flash scan and clip. And, of, of course, nine, you can have 198 points on clip and 318 on flash scan, of course. So, yeah, it's a pretty cool little panel, and today we'll be showing it off. Now, there is one trouble on this panel. That is backup battery RAM which means the RAM battery is dead. So unfortunately, I can't shut this panel off. Well, I can, but if I shut it off, it loses its program, and then I have to reprogram all the devices back in again. So, yes, this thing has got batteries on it. It's, it does work on batteries. And yeah, so, until I get um, another RAM battery, which unfortunately, you can see that yellow box down there, that is the RAM battery, and yes, it is a weird RAM battery. I can't just put a uh, CVS coin cell in there and hope it works. I hope I have to order a special one. And that is the one downside of these panels. So yeah, so I have some ordered. They will be coming sometime in the near future. But until then, it will be having a backup battery RAM trouble. And hopefully the power doesn't go out long enough for the batteries to die. And yeah. So on the system today, we have... Well... We have a clip system going on here. And that's just simply because all of my flash scan devices are currently on the NFS 2640. I don't feel like changing everything out just so I can borrow a clip uh, pull station. So yeah, so for the pull stations we have an ADT 5060. Um, these all are running, all the pull stations will be running on Notifier MMX 101 modules. Coming down here, we have an FSP 751. We have, coming over here, we have an FCI MS2. And here's a good look at the modules. Notifier MMX 101. Moving on, we have a FSI 751. This is an ionization smoke detector. Moving on again, we have an FSP-851. And yeah. Moving on, we have my Firelight BG-12. Yet again, on another MX-101. And finally, we have another FSI-751. Now, we will be trying to smoke some of these detectors out. But unfortunately, like this one, I'm not going to. I'm going to magnet test it because this one is actually pretty much non-sensitive at this point. I, I have smoked the heck out of it, and it's just not even detected it, so... Yeah, unfortunately, this one is on its way out. It still... It isn't giving the panel any sensor fail troubles, or any failure troubles, so... That's good, at least, but it... It definitely is going, not the best detector anymore. It is probably why it was replaced. And for the notification appliances, today we have my Gentex HS... HS twenty four fifteen seventy five WW Commander it's a Commander One Hornstrom. And for the other device I have a Gentex G E G E S three twenty four W R of course set to um uh, fifteen candela. And yeah, it's such a Gentex sync, so these will be syncing and will be silencing. Yeah, so without me rambling anymore, let's get to testing the devices. Yes, we'll start with device one. We'll do the pull stations first and then the detectors. 
Wait, right, here we go. Three, two, one. Go ahead and acknowledge it. Go ahead and silence it. Yes, that Commander 1 is very loud. Now moving on, we will test my FCI MS2. Three, two, one. I can silence it. One thing I did notice about this one, this one is actually running version 27 firmware. Unlike that, it is only running version 25. One thing I noticed is that when it realarms, the signal silence light flashes on this one almost all the time, whereas on my other one, sometimes it will go out. So that is an interesting thing. But yeah. Anyway, I'm going to reset these before I forget. This one is kind of hard to reset. It's locked very stiff. And it's sitting on smooth surface for the bat on the batteries over there. So it likes to slide around. Anyway. Find my PK625 key for this MS2. There it is. I'm probably gonna get hate for um, resetting it the way I do, but it's the way I reset it's my pull station. Close that back down. And moving on, we can go to the BG12. Three, two, one. As you can see, I did set the time on this, but since the real time clock is attached and has a dead RAM battery, it has it has already gotten away and twenty four hours off, of course. Actually, I don't even think it's counting because I said it's the time I set last night and it's still saying it's 11.14. Anyway, we can reset that pulse station. Now let's move on to um, trying out some of these detectors. I'm going to set this one up on its side so it gets a little better. Let's hope we don't... Let me set this down, pull the thing open. Let me hope, let's hope that we don't accidentally trip these. Actually, let me shut this before we end up tripping these. Yeah, all it takes is a little tickle on these. The notifier does not take a lot of smoke to trip. These things are very good detectors. Let's see how much it takes. That's way too much. That's fun. It will take a second. You will notice that it will take a second after the alarm activates to latch. Hopefully it'll go. There it goes. And finally it latches. I am going to try to activate this FSI. That doesn't mean it's going to trip. And if it doesn't trip in a reasonable amount of time, I will probably magnet test it. I don't want to be here all day wasting my entire can of smoke saber just for it to trip. We'll see. Give me another little shot. Guess this one isn't really feeling it. Because it is ionization, it is. It takes a little bit, it, just a little bit different in how it activates, so, yeah. Also tilting it on the side also takes the fluid away from the can, so. Final shot, and I guess we're getting the magnet out. Actually, while we're waiting, let's see if... Oh, there it goes. Oh, it went the pre-alarm. Let's give it another little squirt. There it goes.
as you can see, pre-alarm does work on this thing. And actually, I say pre-alarm works a lot better on this than it does on that one. That one, they almost always go straight into alarm. This is when I've seen all these detectors pre-alarm. So, seems like it's a little more sensitive to pre-alarm than usual. But yeah, that finally went off. Anyway, time for... The 851, let's hope it I can get some in it. It's probably plenty. Hopefully. There it goes. I do love how for the alarm that does activate doesn't show up. It shows up first alarm first. Alright, so yeah, we have one, two, three, module one, two, three, back of battery RAM. So yeah, detector three is what that one that we just activated was. I'll, I'll give this one a little bit of smoke just to see if it's gonna go. I doubt it. See if it plays nicely or not. Not looking like it. Give it the best shot. That's what does suck about these detectors when they get old and they don't work anymore. Oh, there it goes. I stand corrected. But if you notice, it took a lot more smoke than the other ones. It did take a lot more smoke and it took me directly pumping it through the chamber for it to actually activate. I could also increase the sensitivity of it, I just haven't gotten to it yet. But yeah, I did trip and then got lucky to actually catch it tripping. A little while ago, I tried tripping it with smoke, and it literally, I smoked out for like 10 minutes and nothing happened. And yeah, so, that's all the devices. And I can give it a reset. Let's see if it'll do the funny thing when I reset it. It did do it. I, I don't know why it does that. When you reset it or do anything on the panel, briefly, the detect all the LEDs, even though these are running a clip, will pull green. I don't know why it does it. And I actually had to check on the 640 yesterday, and it does it as well on the 640. The detectors will briefly pull green. So, that's pretty interesting, I guess. Anyway, while it initializes here, I guess I will sign out because it's pretty much all I have to show for this panel. It is a it's it is an immaculate condition. I'm glad I got this thing. They were the listing said that the USB port on top of it is dead. But with my experience of panel or of Onyx series panels, if the RAM battery's dead, the USB port doesn't work. Because Notifier does not want you to try to program a chip that doesn't have a thing because the way Notifier programs it dumps it on and then or it loads it after and then reboots. So if you load it and then reboot it, it just loses its, it just loses the program it just tried to dump on. So I must so I it doesn't seem to allow you to program with the USB if it's battery dead. So I guess once I get a new battery, I'll get to see if the USB port works. And and yeah, so really cool panel. I love notifier panels; they work amazing. And yeah, I'm glad I got this thing. It was a good price, and hopefully I'll be able to do a lot more with it. Eventually you'll probably see a NCM card there, and an NCM card up here in the 640, and I, who knows, maybe I pull that pull station, this, this panel goes off. You never know. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, guys, I am rambling at this point, so I will see y'all in the next video.
Thank you all for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe. Anyway, y'all take care. See you in the next one.